right, this is Cindy. And Michael from Part Time Hermes. And today we are attempting to build a greenhouse for $400. Yeah, target budget is $400 uh, and we think we're gonna be really close on it. Uh, so we've got a bunch of things that we learned. First was part of permaculture design. Uh, we know that the only sun that we receive unless we're way out in the yard is on the front of the house and that's obscured in the summer but in the winter it becomes pretty good at, with the leaf fall. Yeah. Uh, we are looking as we've mentioned before at removing some trees over time and so during the summer we started thinking about how we could do a, a front greenhouse instead of a back greenhouse. So the goals are permaculture design zone one or zone zero is your house. Yep. So cold weather, early spring bed weather, we can get right to it. And then we have a space that can passively heat and increase our efficiency on our house slightly. And we've got this area we'll show you that's uh, designed uh, ideally. And we even have some stones and a little bit of cloth uh, in a bad bed that we don't like and so all those things come together uh, and then the ideas of a hoop house high high style hoop house technology is going to allow us to build a greenhouse for four hundred dollars yeah so our goal is to put it right off our front porch here kind of a t temporarily set up so we could take it down as needed put it back up if we need to or just leave it if we want to. Modify it if we don't like it, it blows over, something happens. Yeah, so. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a temporary structure, so. Keep it on, on that and it's right off our front door, which is one room off our kitchen. Ideally, kitchen would be on the south side of the house, but our south side is the front door side. So that doesn't work on this house, but we could still keep this close to the kitchen, which is nice, and be able to grow herbs and start seeds and such and keep it going, hopefully year round. We're, we're going to extend from our faux patio here to the stone flower bed, which is in minimal use. Uh, we've never done anything with it since we've been here. It's got a rock lining, which is permeable to water. Got a old cloth underneath it, uh, I believe, but it's still getting weeds and things up through it. So we will use that as part of the heat sink and a nice way to rest um, plants and create a buffer. And then we're going to use the low tunnel or high tunnel style of electrical conduit uh, materials which we know is extremely inexpensive and easy to work with. So we have uh, just under 20 electrical conduits. Uh, we debated between three quarter inch and one inch. Three quarter inch is a lot easier to work with. Half inch we know is, is too flimsy. Uh, so we're going to do three quarter inch. Um, we're going to bend them and we're going to, we have a Johnny Seed or Elliot Coleman, you know, hoop bending, which may, this is for a 10 foot piece to make a four foot high, four foot wide, uh, sort of a medium to low tunnel. Yeah. Um, we're gonna modify it and just adjust it to create an arc. So we're gonna link in right underneath the eave, which is convenient. There is a, a two by four that's tacked in along the whole distance we found out. So we don't have to find studs. And we're gonna create an arch that we'll customize on the first 10 feet that will come down and out so that the end of the bed comes somewhere in here uh, before a little before the end of the house and then we'll have down posts we'll connect additional posts into the ground and we're, we'll show you later how we're going to anchor those and then the most expensive probably two hundred dollars of the four hundred dollars is we bought an inexpensive storm door, storm door. yeah it's got a right here it's a uh Know, standard among the least expensive we could find storm doors has an adjustable winter storm screen and glass that we can on the top side some of them are anchored we want it on the top side because we want to vent hot air as high as possible if it gets too hot so we're going to build that and we've decided we're going to try and work with the galvanized or aluminum uh, studs that it intersects with the arch that we're going to create so that the height of the arch intersects with the height of the doorway and we'll put that screen door using uh, these you know, galvanized or aluminum uh, studs so the key point is we need to anchor it strongly into this wall because we know the doors open and close and take a lot of stress and then we'll probably put a couple of tacon concrete screws 
in over here and then we're gonna have to create a bracing and we're gonna have to wing that a little bit we've we're, we know what we want to do but we're gonna have to make that work so that we have a storm door now that storm door will create some ventilation but it's also gonna allow a pass through for anybody that needs to use this door yeah and uh, we tend to get quite a few delivery packages which end up all over the place so this will be a nice way that they can slide them in here out of the weather and then we're going to coat everything of course with probably five mil plastic and we tend not to use the greenhouse specific plastic uh, you can get ones that are uv rated and all kinds yeah. of things for long but we find that the standard plastic works pretty well like drop cloths drop painting but you want the thicker ones so they yeah. don't shred uh, and they can be changed after a few years if they fade or get torn we're going to clip them on with plastic clips, which you can get for a number of the tunnel supply. Including Johnny. Johnny has actually, they had some of the better prices we realized. And we've worked with them before. They're actually pretty tough. So we'll put at least an outside sheet on. And if it gets really cold and we think we need to put an inside or sheet, you can actually Flip create an air sides. buffer. You're going to lose a little bit of light, but you can put an air buffer with two layers of sheeting. Now, usually with passive greenhouses, you're concerned about maintaining heat in the winter because the higher the tunnel, the more space the ground has to uh, maintain a heat through the night. We think because of the passive you know, abilities of the brick holding some heat and just heat coming off through the, the doors house and the windows, and the windows. And that uh, we're not too worried about running a high tunnel uh, style. And we're not as high as, as even, some. some. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll probably lose less heat off the house directly outside less, yeah. as well, because we'll have this buffer between the outside air and the house be yeah. by this big and this window, window is a it's a moderately thermal but it's not a super new high thermal window yeah. so it's probably one of our larger heat losses then as we get into the spring we can do our our seed starts as it gets warmer and warmer mm -hmm. and we'll we'll create ventilation as needed and with these clips you can you can roll up the sides and if we feel like we want to take the plastic completely down in the summer yeah um, we can roll it up or take it down we, off we can take it yeah. off uh, the whole goal on this is to be a, a temporary changeable structure that if we don't like it we can modify it cheaply and easily what are we doing first well we're gonna we're gonna create so this this gives us a little more of a curvature that we want you can buy these in a variety of different angles you can also buy electrical conduit benders but that tends to bend a sharp corner you can bend them at different degrees it's a little hand uh you know hand foot bender but that's a really sharp angle we want a little bit of a slope so we're gonna we're gonna bend this partially and then we're gonna just guess and check it so we have a classic storm door that is 80 or 81 inches is the opening which is right about here i believe is the measurement so our stud will come a little bit just slightly above that and it's 36 inches wide now this door is only 30 inches across maybe a 28 inch door this is probably a 36 but we don't want to restrict our ability to move things in so we said we're going to get the 36 inch it's the same price yeah uh, so it's going to come across here and let's say this so this is our connection point we need our arch to intersect and where we feel like we're comfortable with it we'll line up the door and we'll screw the first uh stud here so i've seen people even use just scrap blocks yep. on a um double block on this end yeah. to to anchor yep and, and then, then pull blocks it. every so often and just pull it against that and that bend makes your bend so the, the nice thing about the emt and a couple of the other electrical conduit is they're designed to be bent they're yep. pretty structural even though they're really more designed to hold wires in them um, they're all weather they're galvanized they don't rust and um, while they carry quite a bit of structural content they're bendable and don't collapse but they are designed for this these curves um, by the nature of their primary use which we all know is perfect for greenhouse and uh, tunnel building cool. now if you don't buy one of these which is i don't know 30 or 40 dollars it's probably overpriced but we found it pretty effective we've used it quite a bit uh, it comes with just a designed arch and it has a pole that intersects with a few different sizes of conduit which gives you leverage pulling it around. And then there are <laughs> connectors. So there's a variety of connectors um, for intersecting and for spreading them out. But because lines of, of wire typically run through them, they're all hollow. They don't have good end connectors because they were not built for structural. If you need end connectors, uh, you can buy those through some greenhouse supplies. So our plan is to run one or one and a half of these pipes along the the soffit edge and we're going to tack it in with some basic 
um, U clamps with some screws in it. So those you get at the hardware store as well as the connection pieces. What we don't have is the T connections that either you know come like this or they grasp around and you can put two poles together because that's not a normal electrical connection that's what you have to buy is in crossovers or cross throughs uh, those you are going to buy from a specialty store and they'll get you for a few extra dollars and they're worth but you're talking two or three dollars a connection at most yeah. want to hold the plastic up we want to handle snow yeah. um, and we want to handle a little bit of wind so uh, as a semi-permanent structure so we can build Two, you got to make sure you don't get sags of, of water and, and snow yes. uh, in them. So we're going to have to uh, maybe we do our Play cross maybe we do our crossovers underneath so we get a consistent valley. So thing we want things to slide off, and that's that's our big consideration with our arch is not only headspace, but uh, we can get a lot of snow. So nice removal of snow. It will end up at the end, which will block light a little bit. It will actually cause a buffer from losing too much heat. Too much bottom. heat. Yeah. Uh, and stuff and then uh, for the end it's not necessary you can put these right into the ground mm -hmm. but we bought some like one and a half inch fence post uh, galvanized um, fence post we're going to cut those into a foot and a half or two foot sections use our classic post hole pounder and we will uh, probably pound those in so there's about four to six inches sticking up that will leave a little head space with no dirt in it and those will be anchored and so we can put our, our posts into there so it'll give additional structural support we don't have to put them deep into the ground which also means if we want to just lift them out uh, or if we remove the whole thing for the summer we don't plan to do that we know where our spacing is so we can simply screw back into the line and, and drop those back in and they'll already be preset fender which is semi-optional we've got a sawzall to cut some of these galvanized pieces uh, we've got some Tapcon screws for the concrete. They can be a little bit of a pain to drill in, but they work real well. Um, and then we've got these end connectors, and we've got some metal, self-tapping metal screws, which are designed uh, to go uh, into these joints. And um, have a few wood screws, I guess, to go into the, into the soffit. Um, and that's it. So we're talking very low technology. Yep.